So I've got an awesome word, and we're going to go into the word straight from here. Um, all right, let's pray. Father, we thank you for this morning. I thank you for a new morning, a new day where we can hear your words, that your words will come and speak life to us, and that it will um, yeah, renew, refresh us, renew the mind, give us perspective, help us see what you see, and um, yeah, help us, help us do what you're doing today. Help us line up with the word where there's no faith. Let faith arise in our hearts that we can possess the plans and purposes of God um, for our lives today, and for our families, and for our cities, and that we could be what you've called us to be in this time. And uh, we thank you, Father, where there is sickness that it will go. Um, if there is sickness in our bodies, it has no place there, no right to function there. So in Jesus' name, all sickness, all pain, uh, go. And so we depend on you right now, Father. We depend on you. And uh, yeah, we just welcome you now in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so let's, let's go for it. So I hope you got your Bibles. Um, and we're going we're gonna to go into the Word from here. All right, so today I want to speak about, about faith. And uh, I, I remember there's, I think it was Lester Summerall. Yeah, it was Lester Summerall. Uh, you need to go read some of his stories and, and his biographies. Awesome man of God. Um, also, you know, influenced by like Smith Wigglesworth, for those who know him. Um, so really awesome man of God. But he, he was also a faith preacher. And he said, faith is a fact but faith is an act, all right? Faith is a fact, but faith is an act. Faith looks like something, you know? And so love looks like something, all these, you know, everything else, these qualities, these invisible qualities that God gives us, although they're invisible, um, it, it, it's, it's actually something that one can, that needs to come out in the open. It's something real that that can be made visible. You know? So when I say it's invisible, I say it's you know it's it's invisible to the to the to, to the natural eye, the natural perspective. But faith is visible. You know, you can see when someone has faith. Um, there's examples in the scriptures when every time when Jesus saw his faith, when Paul saw he had faith. Uh, faith is visible, and faith looks like something because with faith there's there's always an action you know there is an application in the natural in order to get certain things to function and to work All right so we're going to look at that today but let's start i want to start man the scripture's been in my heart i think i have read it over the last couple of weeks psalm chapter 103 all right psalm 103 Psalm 103. Let's have a look there. All right. Psalm 103. Verse 1. Praise the Lord, O my soul, with all that is within me. Praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Do not forget all of His kind deeds. He is the one who forgives all your sins, who heals all your diseases. Okay, how many diseases does he heal he heals all of them right you actually hope at home you said all of them he forgives how many sins all of your sins um he heals all your diseases he delivers your life from the pit he crowns you with his loyal love and compassion he satisfies your life with good things so your your youth is renewed like an eagle's now i have to tell you um he writes here, number one, bless the Lord. The King James says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within you. Bless his holy name. All right. Then he says, and forget not one of his benefits. So God wants you to be mindful of the benefits that come when we acknowledge him. Okay. Because he heals all your, your, your diseases. You have to be mindful. He heals all my diseases. He don't want you to be, uh, he doesn't want you to forget that God is the healer. 
that he forgives all your sins. You, we have to be mindful of the fact that, that God wants divine blessings and divine healing, divine life, divine health. He wants that to be manifest in our lives. And uh, so in, we need to know that. So the Psalms writes, he says, don't forget it. You need to be mindful of it. So um, because that is your portion to to function amen so that's the gospel that's why we read the gospel that's why we um that's why we we preach the gospel i've been reading a book um that's really been blessing me he said uh, the book book is just about what happened to the gospel you know we as preachers and uh, believers we need to we need to preach the gospel um people right now have put too much trust in politics in politicians um, yeah, political parties, whatever it is, uh, uh, the, the, the core of our faith is rooted in the gospel and the good news of what Jesus has done. I mean, just think about John 3, 16. When last have you heard a good sermon preached on, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever would believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So that is, that is your portion. I wanted to open um the this morning's meeting with that and we're going to go from here to romans chapter one and we're going to read romans one from verse 16. okay from verse 16 he says i am not ashamed of the gospel okay for it is god's power for salvation to everyone who believes to the jew first and also to the group to the greek okay he says i'm not ashamed of the gospel i am not ashamed of the gospel of jesus christ he says now for the righteousness of god is revealed in this gospel from faith to faith just as it is, as it is written the righteous will live by faith or the righteous by faith will live so how are the righteous going to live? How are the righteous going to thrive? Uh, how are the righteous going to, you know, like um, walk and inherit the promises of God? Here it is. The righteous will live by faith, by trusting in God, by believing the words of God, by running with the words of God. That's how you will live. So um, I think it was William Undi, uh, he, he said it quite well in his own awesome, unique way of saying. He said that... Um, he said the a fish lives by oxygen in the water you know he says, he says human beings live by oxygen but the righteous live by faith so that's that's what we need in order to function so paul writes in in second timothy and, and this is for you he says i think it's second timothy he says this is why i would remind you to stir up the gift you know fan the flame Fan the flame. I need to remind you to stir up the gift, fan that gracious gift, fan that flame, you know, rekindle the embers off, um, that fire, that flame of faith in you, like stir it up. Um, and, and that's where we're, we're called uh, to function. All right, so let's have a look at some examples uh, in, the, in the Old Testament uh, from, from Numbers and... Uh, Numbers chapter from Numbers chapter thirteen. I've got a thank you, Lord. If you got your phone, you can find it easy. If you got your Bible, you got to do it like me. And it takes a while. Numbers chapter thirteen. So you know the story about when when um, Moses sent out the the spies to spy out the land that God had promised them. And so they return, and you you know the story. There were giants in the land, right? Um, Numbers thirteen says, "All right, I'm going to from. Let's read." From verse 31 but the men who had gone up with him said we are not able to go up against these people because they are stronger than we are 
Then they presented the Israelites with a discouraging report of the land they had investigated, saying, the land that we pass through to investigate is a land that devours its inhabitants. All the people we saw there are of great stature. We even saw the Nephilim. There the descendants of uh, Anak came from the Nephilim. And we seemed like grasshoppers, both to ourselves and to them. So I want to ask you, does God make you a grasshopper? God's, you know, it's think about his kingdom. The Bible says that, that he is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. This is a different kind of kingdom that we're in. We're not in the kingdom of, you know, you have one king and you have normal, regular people. This kingdom that we're in, that God calls us in, is a kingdom of kings. <laughs> you know, he says he's the Lord of lords. He's not, he's not the Lord of slaves. He's the Lord of lords. Now, I know our application is service, so we serve him. But Jesus, he's the king of kings. He makes you a king. He makes you a ruler, right? And so that's why he says, hey, you know, we'll send you out into the land and there's giants there. Now, naturally thinking, um, I compare myself to a giant. Naturally thinking, obviously, oh, I don't know. I don't know how much of a chance I have. But, you know, you put a David in there who understands, um, who understands what, what, what you're able to achieve with God and he'll tell you, right? Okay, so I hope, I hope that, is, that is speaking. So let's, let's read on. Then all the community raised a loud cry and people went, wept that night. And all the Israelites murmured against Moses and Aaron. And the whole congregation said to him, If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had perished in this wilderness. Why has the Lord brought us into this land only to be killed by the sword? that our wives and, our ch and children should become plunder. Wouldn't it be better for us to return to Egypt? So they said to one another, let's appoint a leader and return to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell down with their faces to the ground before the whole assembly, the assembled community of the Israelites. And Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of um, Jephune, I don't know how to say that, two of, his, um, two of those who had investigated the land, they tore their garments. They said to the whole community of the Israelites, the land we pass through to investigate is an exceedingly good land. If the Lord delights in us, then he will bring us into this land and give, it, give to us a land that is flowing with milk and honey. And don't re be rebellious against the Lord. Do not fear the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Right? So I want you to see, um, it's amazing. Faith looks arrogant. Faith doesn't seem wise. Um, you know, so, so without faith, come on, let me tell you this. You might seem wise to the world. Because the, the wisdom of this world is foolish you know, to, to God. Uh, so if you don't, without faith, you'll never move mountains. You know, you might look wise. You might, you might, uh, you, you might have a favor from the majority. But, but with faith, you will, you will, you will do the impossible, right? You will do the impossible. So by, by trusting in God, by trusting what he said. Yeah, so we've had a, a couple of talks about just this year, 2020. It's a year that I don't think we'll ever, we'll ever forget. My initial, when I prayed in the beginning of this year and from 2019 into 2020, I had a real strong uh, witness in my heart that God said, this is going to be a year of blessing. And uh, in many cases, it's, it's, been, it's been a tough year been a tough year worldwide all over the world and and so this is this is interesting because god will god will give you rivers in the wilderness you know he he just has that reputation of of you know he gives a word and he says hey let's go to the other side halfway they, they meet the storm and you know you know how many times i've preached about that jesus walks from the storm 
and and uh, but and last week we spoke about not changing your confession. I still believe. You know, even through this year, we've we've experienced tremendous blessing. We've we've seen the hand of God, like in my I'm speaking personally in our lives. Um, yes, there's been challenges, but ultimately, are we going to stand on what God said, or or is your agreement with the world, the condition of your heart, is it positioned in a, in a state of fear, from what what the what the people are saying about the giants in the land? Or are, is your heart um, positioned in faith and confident in what, what God has promised you and what he said he would do? God said, you know, he spoke blessing upon, I think, all over the world. But let's talk about it within our church. He said, this is going to be a year of blessing. This will be a year of overflow. Um, you know, so right now my heart still needs to be positioned in those words. And, and like Caleb and Joshua, that had a different spirit and that rose up and said, okay, well, we're going to have these giants for, for bread. Okay, and that's what, what he does. So take it back to Wednesday. Job said, what I feared has come upon me. Right? And uh, Paul also writes to Timothy, he says, God has not given you a spirit of fear. The Bible says Caleb and Joshua had a different spirit. So they were different. So the, the majority said, hey, you know, our wives, our children, and we're going to die. They, they seemed wise. To God, they were arrogant. Joshua and Caleb to the world seemed arrogant. To God, Caleb and Joshua were humble because they trusted in, in, in God. But humility in faith sounds like arrogance in the world's perspective amen so it's a real it's a real fine line so we choose we choose to trust in god when i look back and we sing that song all my life you have been faithful he's been faithful all these years okay amen so let, let me take you to john chapter 10 john 10 and uh, from verse 3 from verse 32, Jesus said to them, I've shown you many good deeds from the Father. For which one of them are you going to stone me? The Jewish leaders replied, we are not going to stone you for good deeds, but for blasphemy. Because you, a man, are claiming to be God. Now, I love this reply from, from Jesus. It says, Jesus answered, it is, not, is it not written in your law? I said, you are God. So that is um, referencing, I think, to Psalm 82, verse 6. He says, it's not written in your, in your law. I said, you are God's. Think about that. So this is what, what Jesus is saying to us. You are God's. So the Israelites said, we are grasshoppers. God says, you are God's. Are you an ant or are you a grasshopper? Or are you a god or are you a king? You know, we need to understand that when we worship him, when we acknowledge him and we bless the Lord over my soul, what are we declaring over ourselves? He wants you to know that you're a god. <laughs> it sounds blasphemous, but he said, even, even in your law, I call you gods. Now listen to what he says. If those people to whom the word of God came were called gods, do you, do you say about the one, okay, we're called gods, and the scripture can't be broken. Do you say about the one the Father set apart and sent into the world, you are blasphemy, because I said I am the Son of God. You are kings, you are lords, you are sons of God. Now, it's about time we, we lay hold of who we are in Christ Jesus, and we do something about it. Faith is a fact but faith is an act so you got to do something there's no good in saying i believe but we don't act it out we don't put action to it i love our the, the fifth book of the new testament is called the book of acts it's not called the book of talks it's called the book of acts it's not a lot of people saying powerful things awesome things it's a demonstration of faith 
right through that book. And the book of Acts is hasn't stopped. It's still going on. It's still in, in effect today. But we need a church that acts and not a church that just talks. So how do we act? Okay, so let me just quickly give you a, a testimony of something that happened because I, I preached about it. So I, wanted, I want to encourage you all. I remember, um, you know, quite often I think all of us go through like similar cha challenges financially um, or whatever challenge it is, you know, um, it can be health. But um, a couple, about a month ago, well, financially, we have areas of, you know, Lord, you need to provide here. Yeah, need some attention. And uh, so I, rem I, I operate different than, than the world does. You know, I know it. I'm, it's just the grace that's, that I know that's been on my life. Um, but uh, we, we had a certain need and certain areas that needed to be covered. And... Uh, um, about a month ago, uh, um, I was praying about it, this area. I said, Lord, this is what I need covered. And, um, and that night someone had a dream and they dreamed about me and they phoned me and they said, Bruce, I had a dream about you and your, your finances. Okay. Eric in Fuster, that was you. Thank you so much. And uh, he says, he says, so this is what I'm going to do, brother. I'm going to proceed into, into your account. And uh, that seed that he sowed to me wasn't, wasn't what I needed. So I, I, I took that as a sign, okay, and, and I preached about this in the church. He says, with the, Paul writes, he says, God gives seed to the sower and he gives bread to the eater. Now, see, this is where we need to do things by faith. So I took that amount and I said, Lord, well, if this is not my provision, then this must be my seed. And um, so I took that seed and I immediately sowed it. You see, God gives seed. He gives seed for what? For sowing. You know, so this is in faith. God provides everything, but he, he's going to he's going to help you work the way he works. And the Bible makes it clear that God uses seed. God uses word and word is seed, but he gives if you he gives to each kind of seed for a body. So in that sense, okay, I understood it was seed. So I sowed it immediately into our um into our church and I just sowed it. I said, Lord, this is seed. And uh I think this week, this week, towards the end of the week, a uh, real awesome uh, friend well, uh, that I met on Facebook. Um they said, Bruce, some money has come into our hands and I have a strong feeling that this has to come to you. And so in that place, right immediately there, yeah, yeah, comes the, the amount that we ask God for. And I think that's, that's an example because, because God wants people to act and not just act, you know, act in faith. So James writes and he says, faith without works is dead. Okay, so you need faith and works, not works as in if you want to move a mountain, take a shovel and start digging. No, you, that's just works. You need faith and works. There must be the mutual between two. Okay, so I have faith from God. I'm going to apply this faith and I'm going to see. Um, I'm going to see God at work. So look, it's it's there's no how to. This is not a how to guide. The closest that we have is let's maybe read it in mark chapter 11 uh, read it a couple of times mark, mark chapter 11 uh, verse 21 uh, well it's verse 20 in the morning as they passed by they saw the fig tree that jesus cursed you know the story from the roots peter remembered and he said to him rabbi look the fig tree you cursed has withered Jesus said to them, have faith in God. All right. Now, remember, that's how they translated it. But if you have a look in your King James Bible, you'll see that this could have been translated as have the faith of God. Other, other translations would be like have faith in the faith of God or have faith in the faithfulness of God. So take you back to Romans 1 verse 17. He says, 
is revealed from faith to faith. God wants to take you from a place of faith to another faith. And that is from my faith to his faith. And where I'm not just using my faith, where I'm moving in God's faith. So, so God gives us his faith. <laughs> and, and Paul writes about it and he actually says, um, well, let me first read this finish. I tell you the truth. Someone says to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea. He does not doubt in his heart, but believes what he says will happen. It will be done for him. Now, now believe. That's correct, but it's not mental power, like persuading myself the mountain is going to move, the mountain is going to move, the mountain is going to move. No, it's being persuaded, that's right, but then action, and uh, the action to speak, but from what? The faith of God. Okay, so that's, that's very important to understand. So if we go to Galatians chapter 2, Galatians chapter 2, uh, my goodness, I can't find it, there we go, Galatians 2 from verse 20, I, I have been crucified with Christ, and it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me, so the life I now live in the body, I live because of the faithfulness of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Okay, I, the life I now live in the body, I live because of the faithfulness of the Son of God. All right, so now the King James also says something similar. He says, the life that I now live in the body, I live by the faith of the Son of God. The Amplified puts it differently. He says, the life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God. But I love this debate that the translators are having because it, it is faith in the Son of God. But it's not just that. It's faith of the Son of God. God wants to move you from position of faith in or just faith in to faith of. Imagine what we can do with the faith of Jesus Christ. Imagine what we can do with the faith of God. God wants you to use his faith. God wants us to use um his faith amen i think that's that's really powerful you got to do something you got to do something okay so let's let's close we're going to go to hebrews um chapter 11. Uh, i remember um uncle corvus always taught us about faith and works he said it's like if you go canoeing or you go rowing rowing on your boat he says you need faith and you need works so it doesn't help you row with one arm if you row with one arm you're going to be like the israelites in the wilderness you're going to go around the mountain for 40 years you need you need to have faith and works and so when you have faith and works you go forward you give momentum so it's no good just saying saying something you got to do something okay so it's not earning it's when I put action behind what I say, that means I believe what I'm doing. All right. That believes what I'm doing. Action can be speaking. You know, so the action that we need to take is actually to, um, if you believe something, speak it. You know, um, but then all the other things. If you trust in God, like I said, like an amount, um, for me, I took a seed and I sowed towards that. But I want to challenge, you know, if you're trusting God, for example, for a raise, right? Here's, here's an idea. Tithe your raise or make take a seed of, let's say you're earning 8,000 rand a month and you've been sowing 800 rand a month. Say, no, I'm not. I'm trusting God for a promotion. Uh, a faith action would be like, for example, take a seed of of a of, 1,200 rand and trust God for 12,000. It's just an example. It's not a rule. That's why I say faith is, is something that you need to do. And it's not something that you, that you decide to so say, Lord, this is what I'm going to do. Yes, faith. Yeah, do it. Okay. And I think the Bible says, you know, grow in faith, grow in grace. That's what Peter writes. Grow in grace. Um, so if you, if you don't, if you haven't, 
I'm just talking finance wise, it can be anything. Um, trust God in a, in a small area, see where, how he provides first in a small area. Like if you haven't got a car yet and you trust in God, trust him for something small first. You know, it's no good you go and you say, okay, I'm going to go get a Ferrari. God, give me a Ferrari. Um, trust God for something small and put faith in action towards that. And it's his ability and then and see how he provides it. Okay. I said uh, Hebrews 11. Let's close here. Um, Hebrews 11 verse 1. It says, now faith. And I love the way that it starts that because faith is now. Faith is, is now. Faith is not tomorrow. Faith is now faith. Faith does something about it now. Okay. He um, says, now faith is being sure of what we hope for being convinced of what we, we do not see. So I can see faith in you, even if I don't see um, the manifestation of it. I can see you have faith. Jesus saw people who didn't have, who, like, who were blind. He said, he's got faith. I saw his faith. Come on. Do you have a need? Do you have an area of lack? You don't, you don't understand um, R.W. Shamba, he said, you don't have a problem. No matter what you're facing, he says, if you're a believer, you don't have a problem. All you need is faith. And uh, everything is already yours in Christ Jesus. But we possess these things by faith, and by grace. Not by works in earning, but by grace God gives. But our work is, is to believe and, and I, I believe there is always an action. He said, if you want to see the sick healed, what do you need to do? Lay hands on that one. What is laying hands? It's an act of faith. It's not, it's not uh, magic. It's just the faith action. So whatever you do, act something out. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for. Being convinced of what we do not see. All right. Amen. So, um, uh, someone said something that blessed me, David Ogan. He said, when man says it's impossible, that's when I need to get involved. With God, all things are possible. And this is where I want to close. The Bible don't say, don't emphasize that for God, all things are possible. That is general knowledge. God can do anything. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible doesn't say for God, all things are possible. The Bible says with God, all things are possible. You see, it's only faith. It's only faith when I can see it as with God. I'm going to do the impossible with God. So when I say with God, it's telling me that all things are possible for me. Not for God. For God, that's true. But it's only faith. It's only faith when I can acknowledge that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Not he can do all things. He knows he can do all things. Do you know you can do all things through Christ? Are you, are you crippled by fear? Or are you strengthened by faith? On that mountain that you're facing today, are you going to let that cripple you, that giant? Or are you going to possess these, these words or, or lay hold of these words? And go and get your inheritance and what God is for you. Come on, in this time where the world is crazy and there's knowledge going all over the place, you know, um, we need we need a faithful fold. They might look arrogant, they might get flagged from the world and persecution, but we're going to believe the words of God and we are going to run with it. Amen. So I trust that these words bless you this morning. Do something with it. Grab, grab your word or whatever, take some of these scriptures down, chew on it, meditate it, and then do something. Do something. Um, uh, go speak or go, go take a step of faith and get somewhere. <laughs> Amen. Don't be crippled by fear. Don't be crippled by the giants. At the age, I think it was of 80, Caleb comes to that same mountain, to that same place. I don't know how many, it was 40 years later, but I'm not sure. 
and he's at the age of 80 says yeah it's 40 years he says i'm as strong as i was when i was 40. hey give me this mountain you know what he went and he got his his promise and so no matter how old you are how how long you've been waiting god said you can have something god's given you a promise go for it amen and uh yeah let's learn yeah i don't know say so, i bless you guys let me pray for you for father we thank you for faith to arise in our hearts lord we trust you we don't depend lord we didn't see we don't depend on our failures we don't depend on our doubts our doubts our failures they are unreliable well we rely on you and your words i pray lord that this faith will produce a courage and a boldness in in your people a courage and a strength that understands who we are in christ jesus that we are not grasshoppers we are not ants but we are kings and priests we are gods in the kingdom and we have the right to speak and to see things change and to act out the word of god thank you father for breakthrough testimonies upon testimonies this week um, the things that people have been waiting for, um, breakthroughs to happen, the the fears, and we won't be like Job, we said, what I feared has come upon me, but we'll be like, like um, other examples of where what we believe for has happened. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.